Kusai Japan is a junior partner of France, everybody. Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's video where we're going to be taking a look at what would happen if EU4 was cursed. So here we are in the game, and I can feel you guys thinking, Hawk, what's cursed about this, man? Nothing seems out of the ordinary. We're in the political map mode. Everything looks the same. Trade map mode, everything looks the same. It's all the same in the religious and in the imperial map modes and the cultures and regions map mode as well. What's so cursed about this what-if scenario? Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's jump in as a certain nation, and I'll show show you how cursed EU4 can get. And before we begin, if you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out a lot. And if you want to see more what-if scenarios like this, or more EU4 videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. Alright, alright, here we are in game once again. Everything seems as normal, but first let me turn off Terra Incognita so we can see the entire world. There we are. We're the Ottomans, it doesn't matter which nation we are, but we do need to unpause and wait for a certain event to happen. So let's wait for that. And there's the event, welcome to Cursed Universalis. The purpose of the mod is that almost every nation changes their religion to another religion. Wait for the next event to be triggered for more information. So that's what this mod does. Let's take this, and here's the next event, the world is cursed. Your religion will change with a 96% chance. And there's a 96% chance every nation in the world changes their religion to a random one. And of course a 4% chance that we stay the same. So let's take this event Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, I, I thought we would go like Catholic or Protestant or something. Ultra Riga Ottomans, everyone. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, let's unpause and wait for everyone else to change their religion as well. There we go. People should be changing it. Oh my god. Are you guys seeing this? Dude, okay. Everyone is changing it. It's all coming together. There we go. Everyone should be done changing it pretty soon. And yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Oh. No, no, what is this? Oh my god, this was a mistake. We have Inti Austria and Bohemia, Totemist Hungary, Mahayana England, Sunni Scotland. Oh, well, well France State Catholic. I feel like this is cursed for some reason as well. Dude, Animist Pope, man. Fetishist Naples, we have a Zoroastrian Biz, Tangri Poland. Oh, oh. Now this might be a scary Poland, huh boys? We have Vajrayana Muscovy. Oh, Denmark and Norway state Catholic, that's pretty nice. Theravada, Portugal, Ebadi, Granada, Confucian, Castile, Ming is Hussite, Korea is Orthodox, the Timurids are Mahayana, the Mamluks are also Alcharinga, dude. Oh my god, I haven't seen a map mode this colorful since, well, ever. I don't think I've ever seen a map mode this colorful. But wait folks, that's not all. Not only are we running the Cursed Universalis mod, we're also running the 3x mod. Austria, Austrian traditions, morale of armies plus 30%, improved relations plus 90%, us as the Ottomans plus 15% discipline, plus 9 tolerance of hedons. That's right, our tradition is plus 99% force limit, minus 60 CCR. Everything in the game is magnified times 3. If this isn't a cursed scenario, I don't know what is, dude. Admin ideas, CCR minus 75%, sign me up. Quantity land force limit plus 150, manpower plus 150. Dude, this is gonna be an insane, insane scenario. So yeah, man, that's our setup for today. We're running the Cursed Universalis in 3x mods, and we're gonna see what happens in this very cursed scenario. We'll check back in in 1480, and uh, boy, I'm afraid of what we're gonna see. So now it's 1480, let's take a look at everything that's happened in our cursed scenario over here today. No changes in North and South America just yet, of course it is pretty early early for colonizing, although Portugal will be doing that with their plus 40, oops, sorry, with their plus 75% colonial range. These are the religions, let's just check in from last time and see how cursed this is, Austria and Bohemia, oh, and uh, Styria too apparently, who has popped out of Austria, they've been struggling with pretender rebels this entire time, because they're anti and you do get quite a lot of pretenders with anti when you pass reforms. But aside from that, a lot of nations have been doing their usual stuff, of course it's too early to see some real cursedness. Morale Bavia has popped out of Bohemia, that's pretty cursed. Styria has popped out of Austria, that's also pretty cursed. Burgundy is actually doing real well. They had a little coalition going against them because they were expanding pretty aggressively and because, well, there's apparently not enough nations to be emperor, the Holy Roman Emperor has dissolved. So we'll definitely see some cursed stuff, especially in this region since everyone can blob. Hungary has expanded over here, Sweden is looking really powerful. They broke free from Denmark, they even have provinces over here, but they were beaten up themselves, but they have expanded into Novgorod too. The Timurids, I don't know what they're 
they're doing. What's this border, dude? Is it a T for Timurids? I don't know. In the Great Powers list, we have Ming at number one, France at number two, Burgundy at number three, Ottomans at number four, because they haven't taken an institution. Then we have Castile, the Mamluks, Poland, and Muscovy. Poland still has their PU over Lithuania. They got Danzig, they got Moldavia, so everything is as usual there. Ah, yes, Nahuatl, Moldavia, of course. Castile has been beaten up by Aragon over in this region, so we can see that Aragon have expanded into them with these three provinces. Oh, but now they're a junior partner of Castile. I guess that didn't last long. Castile is Confucian, Aragon, they're Confucian as well, so maybe that's how they got that uh, little personal union going there. Oh, of course not, it's an event. Meanwhile, the Pope they've become orthodox i forgot what they became earlier when we had the event but yep now they're orthodox and not a lot of cursed stuff going on over here in italy bosnia has apparently emigrated to albania venice is expanding a bit more than usual of course due to the lack of the hre and hungary is looking pretty strong as well muscovy they're not looking that powerful but they have expanded in the livonians a bit i don't know if they can push into sweden or lithuania i guess we'll have to see ming they're still doing all right passing reforms and stuff well i guess they're gaining um mandate but it's not too Two curse for them being Husite, I guess. Meanwhile, in Japan, we have nations consolidating. This is one of the most cursed regions in the religion map mode, definitely to say the least. And aside from that, a lot of things are looking as a regular. Of course, it is too early to notice some real cursed stuff going on, like I said. But by the time 1580 rolls around, who knows what we'll see, man? Who knows what we'll see, especially here in the HRE. Ooh, and even Bavaria formed. That's always nice to see. We'll check back in in 1530 and see what's up. So now it's 1530. Let's take a look at what's been happening in the past 50 years, jumping straight into Europe where we can see that Castile, they've full annexed Aragon, or not full annexed, just taken the decision to form Spain, and now they're Spain. But the north of their country has been gobbled up by France over here, and the Balearic Islands as well, Mallorcan separatists, will they pop out? These 18k, why are they here? I guess we have to see. Portugal has been expanding over here a bit, let's take a look at what they've been colonizing. We got Portuguese Brazil, Spanish La Plata, alright alright, Spanish Colombia, New Spain, wonderful, and actually Spain has been tributarying a bunch of these guys over in the new world as you can see a ton of tributaries over here guys I know you're Confucian, man, but you don't need the mandate. You're not the emperor of China. Like, you don't gotta get as many tributaries. Is Portugal tributarying nations too? No, of course, they're Theravada, so they won't be doing that. Going over into Italy, Naples is looking super, super powerful, man. Listen, goods produced plus 30% and minus 30 dev cost, minus 15 tech cost in the 1500s. That's crazy. No wonder they're so powerful and they've allied themselves to France. They're looking super, super strong. Speaking of France, they're beating up Burgundy right now. Austria, they've been split in two by Augsburg. Augsburg OP anyone? Question mark? Over here we have Rothenburg, Bavaria, they're doing all right. Hesse is looking super strong over here in the center of the HRE, while the former HRE and Hamburg is dominating the north. They're looking very powerful as well. They got hamburger traditions, tasty tasty, tax, light ship, global trade power, republican tradition, not too powerful. So why are they so powerful? In Scandinavia, Sweden is dominating that. Norway, they don't exist. Denmark, they're one province minor. Over in England, we have Sunni Gildum. What's up with that, dude? What's up with that? Going over in the eastern half of Europe, we have Poland forming the Commonwealth. Tengri with reformed as a syncretic faith. That's a certified bra moment right there. And we have a OP Hungary. That's Totemus. They've taken a bunch of provinces from the Ottomans over here. Of course, the Ottomans, they're not Sunni. They don't have the Ottoman government type with OP rulers. They can't convert Constantinople to Turkish and Sunni. It's still Greek and Zoroastrian. So that's definitely a nerf to the Ottomans right there. They're not even winning this war versus Epirus, dude. They're not even winning versus Epirus. What else do you want me to say, man? What? What else do you want me to say? Muscovy, they're not looking too good. They got a bunch of tributaries. They're Vajrayana. Well, that's nice. I guess they won't be expanding too much into their tributary neighbors right here unless they break that status. The Timur is looking pretty powerful. They are Mahayana, which isn't too weird for them. Will we see a Mahayana Mughals? I guess we have yet to see. The Hordes are looking pretty nice. Uzbek and Aurora and Mongolia are chilling. Someone from Manchu, it was probably Janju, and they've annexed all of Korea, dude. The wait, wait. Janju still exists. So it wasn't Janju? I guess it was someone like Haishi or Yehe Nara? Was it? I'm not even gonna try and guess. Over in Japan, we have Ashikaga and Ouchi, their Husite and Totemist. Wonderful, that's what I like to see. Kilwa is doing some stuff over here in East Africa. They have a lots of border war going on. I don't know why they're expanding in this way, but hey, who can blame them, right? Who can blame them? Not too many strange things happening in West Africa or the Congo region, and Portugal and Spain are colonizing the South. And that's what things are looking like in 1530. Lots of cursed things starting to happen, especially over in Europe with France, with Naples, with Hungary, the Ottomans, Sweden and two over in the former HRE nations, Hamburg, Hesse, and I'm only predicting that it will get even more cursed as the game progresses. We'll check back in in 1580.
So now as the 1580s, let's take a look at what's going on in the world. Starting off in South America, we can notice that those colonization buffs are really helping out. And it's been fully colonized by some border gory, definitely very border gory colonial nations. We got Spanish La Plata, Spanish Peru, Spanish Brazil, Spanish... What, what is this? Goias? What's that? Oh, that's directly owned by them. All right. New Granada, Portuguese Brazil, Rio de Prata, some other native nations still being here. In Central America, Spain is once again dominating. We got Portugal right here, some tiny French and British colonies as well. Shout out to Kashita though. They're a Sikh tribe. Wonderful. We got other native nations in the center of the North American continent. Spanish Canada, Lavrador. Now that's the first time I'm seeing that. Portuguese Alaska, French Canada, and other stuff like that. Even Spanish California. Going over to Africa. Africa, the South is owned by Portugal and Spain. We got Kilo over here. They're not doing too well, but they are kind of are doing well. <laughs> they just have a very border gory provinces in East Africa. No nation is dominating, but Aden is expanding over here. Nothing in the Congo, nothing out of the ordinary. We got Jene and Ayer and Hausa and Jolof dominating Western Africa with some British and Spanish colonies as well. The Mamluks, they're still alive. In the Maghreb, Morocco and Tripoli are doing great. Jared and Tunis are surviving along with Algiers. No expansion from Spain and Portugal over here, at least not too much. Kind of weird bro. In Arabia, Hormuz is the strongest nation. We got Fars over here, the Timurids, while well, they've blown up. Listen, I think Shirvan is going for Mare Nostrum, except in the Caspian Sea, they only need the province of Astrakhan to complete the Mare Nostrum achievement. Will they do it? It's definitely possible. Oh wait, no. They're guaranteeing Astrakhan, so that won't happen. Silly AI. Over here we got Uzbek and some other hordes chilling. Russia isn't expanding into them. Why bro? Well, because they've tributaried them and they aren't gonna break that. Or at Mongolia still exists. Manchu is expanding. Expanding Ming is, well, allied to France and Japan, apparently. If that's not cursed, I don't know what is. Over in Southeast Asia, we got Lana, Utaya, Champa, some other maritime nations here. No dominant ones just yet. Spain is colonizing Australia. And in India, Bengal and Bahmanis are the biggest nations. And we got some smaller ones in the south and in the north as well. Going over to Europe, France is expanding even more into the Iberian Peninsula. They're looking super strong. Naples formed the two Sicilies after they got some provinces from Spain here. They declared war together with France versus Spain. It's looking more and more likely that they will form Italy. They just need one or two more provinces, I'm thinking. Maybe Genoa and Milan, something like that? I guess we'll have to see. But Mantua is also allied to France, so that might be tricky for them. In the former HRE nations, we got Augsburg dominating the south, Hesse dominating the middle, and Hanover dominating the north, with some smaller ones scattered around them. Hungary, they've blown up. <laughs> The Ottomans and the Commonwealth have expanded into them. They still got Croatia though, but listen, their strong start due to being totemist looks like it's not so strong anymore. But luckily, they're still guaranteed by the Commonwealth and they're guaranteeing Bohemia, a little guarantee chain going around there. The Ottomans are expanding in this region though. Russia is chilling, like I said. Livonia is doing pretty well. Shout out to Livonia. Sweden is shrinking and Great Britain who is Mahayana, still can't conquer Gildam, who is Sunni. Well, maybe because they're a tributary. <laughs> and that's what's been going on in the past 50 years, ladies and gentlemen. Take a look at this cursed, cursed religious map mode. Let's take a look at the culture map mode. Not a lot of cursed stuff going on over here. In the great powers list, we have Ming, the Ottoman Spain, France, the Commonwealth, Bengal, Bahmanis, and Portugal. We'll check back in in 1630 when expansion really ramps up in the age of absolutism. So now is the 1630s, and oh my god, what happened? happened here is this Livonia dude what happened here this was all Sweden it was even known by Russia why did Livonia do this we have to investigate obviously they've gotten some nice alliances with the Commonwealth especially looks like they teamed up to beat up Russia over here big Commonwealth like I said man Tengri Poland that's scary Tengri Commonwealth apparently even scarier not only have they and Livonia expanded into Russia but Livonia has expanded quite a lot in Scandinavia as well and thanks to that Denmark and Norway are back yay it's not just Sweden. Going over in northern Germany, we have Hanover here, which was formed by Hamburg, of course, and they're in a coalition versus Westphalia. Now, who formed Westphalia? This has got to be, oh my god, look at that coalition. I was about to say this has got to be Hesse, and actually, they're in that coalition war right now. Who are they fighting? Well, this is not gonna end well for them. Although, you know, their little quadruple alliance here of the Netherlands, Westphalia, Augsburg, and the two Sicilies is pretty good, but listen. France is on the other side, man. There's no winning that. Speaking of the two Sicilies, they seem to have lost a bunch of provinces over here in the north. Two Mantua looks like they lost their alliance with France, but Mantua kept it. Or, yeah, they did keep it. And they're allied to the Ottomans as well. So yeah, man. Italy, it's not gonna be formed by the two Sicilies. Maybe by Mantua, though. We'll see if they can recover. Meanwhile, Spain over here is sieging down France. They've lost some more provinces to France. Portugal has also lost provinces to them and France, and that's what things are looking like over here. We still got Sunni Gildam, and we got uh, Mahayana Thoma 
Ottomans, so that's nice. Hungary, they seem to not have recovered, and the Ottomans are blobbing out pretty hard. Over here, Ethiopia is doing some work along with Jene in West Africa. Kilwa is still looking pretty strong. Kasanje is looking the strongest in Congo. The Timurids, they blew up. Shirvan, they're not any closer to Mari Nostrum. In fact, they have lost provinces to the Ottomans. Force, I don't know what they're doing. Bahmanis and Bengal are still the most powerful nation in India. Looks like there's not a lot of changes here. Ming is fighting Yorkand. Manchu have lost to Japan. Uzbeks looking pretty big. Let's take a look at the New World. Not a lot of changes in South or North America. Just some more colonization by the Portuguese. And that's what things are looking like in the 1630s in the age of absolutism. It's definitely getting very cursed in Northern and Central Europe for sure. And probably in Eastern too. We'll see what the Commonwealth can do. They're rivals of the Ottomans. We'll check back in in 1680. So now is the 1690s. Oops, sorry, I was watching TikTok. Starting off in South America, we can see a huge Paraguay. Listen, the colonies, they've started to break free, man. Kind of early, but whatever. Ah, of course, Theravada Paraguay. Wonderful. We still have some other colonies here left over and some native nations, but we also have Colombia. Now, listen, I gotta wonder, why do the colonies form Paraguay all the time? Why not some other nations here like Peru or Argentina or whatever? Oh, it's always Paraguay. Don't they all have the same national ideas? So why exactly Paraguay? I guess we'll never know. Going into Central America, we got Maya and Colombia, pretty similar color. The Antilles? That's owned by France now. It was owned by Portugal. Whatever. Shout out to Cachita. They're looking pretty strong. We have an independent Canada, strong Powhatan, and some Portuguese colonies over here. Even French Canada and Portuguese Greenland. Shout out to Iceland. In South Africa, it's dominant by the Portuguese. We got Kilwa here pretty much the same as they've been all game. Kasanje is growing a bit. Jene is looking strong and Majertin is looking pretty strong in the Horn of Africa themselves. Listen, I'm seeing a pattern here with the Buddhist uh, nations. Why are most of the strongest nations Buddhist? I guess we'll never know. Or will we? It's a pretty good religion, what can I say? We got Morocco here. Ooh, they've expanded into Iberia actually. Will we see an Andalusia this game formed by the AI? Let's see, let's see. The Ottomans are blobbing out massively over here in North Africa and Arabia, but they've lost provinces in Europe. Over here in the Pontic Steppe, a lot of provinces lost to the Commonwealth, even in Anatolia and in the Balkans as well. So, is this the decline of the Ottomans? They're looking alright, they got manpower, they got armies, they got boats, they're fighting Ethiopia right now, so nothing out of the ordinary there. I guess they just lost a war to the Commonwealth, man. Shout out to that Tangri Commonwealth. France is looking pretty strong in Western Europe, they're pushing into Iberia even more. Portugal has grown a bit into Spain as well, Catalonia has popped out, Spain isn't looking too strong, but boy oh boy. Taking a look at the region of Italy, we can also see the nation of Italy. That's right everyone, we have Italy. Italy has been formed by the AI, this was formed by Mantua of course. Looks like they got all provinces they needed to form it and it was not done by the two Sicilies. And not only do we have the two Sicilies, we also have a third Sicily right here. Once again, the return of the three Sicilies <laughs> and a shout out to Italy. The HRE is getting gobbled up by its stronger neighbors like Hungary, the Commonwealth and France and we only have some tiny nations left like the Netherlands, Westphalia and Bavaria. Those are the strongest ones over here. Livonia, they're looking even bigger. Commonwealth Scandinavia, sure. Iceland in Bratsburg, I'll take it. What can I say? No changes in the British Isles. Russia shrinking, Uzbek is growing, I don't know what's going on over here, Shirvan's still alive, no changes between Bahmanis and Bengal, but actually Bengal has been expanding quite a lot into Southeast Asia, and we have a big Lan Na over here, not a lot of unusual things over here, Portuguese Australia, you know what it is, Japan is pretty big, Ming East Siberia looks like they've taken exploration ideas, it's true, they have, and Manchu has replaced Oirat and Mongolia, I don't know what's up with that, but expansion is definitely ramping up as you boys can see, the religion map mode is looking as cursed as ever, and I wonder how much more cursed can it get in the age of revolutions. We'll check back in in 1730. So now is the 1730s and boy oh boy there's been lots of development. So let's jump right into South America. Paraguay and Colombia are huge along with some of these native nations over here on this coast and we also have Portuguese Brazil. Shout out to them. In Central America Maya is dominating but Colombia is creeping closer too. They've also built the Panama Canal. Shout out to Colombia. Over in North America we got some Portuguese colonies, French colonies, Canada Canada, Powhatan, and Creek are the strongest nations, and the Antilles are here. Oh, we have a California too. Why is the bear so tiny? Either way, going down to Africa, Kilwa is expanding in East Africa, Majortin is doing alright here, Jene, who's Al Sharinga, by the way, they're dominating West Africa, and in the Maghreb, Morocco have formed Andalusia, and they're looking super, super strong. Look at all of these three star generals. Shout out to uh, Vajrayana Andalusia, apparently, who has Spain as a tributary state along with Songhai. So there you go, folks. 
another powerful formable nation being formed by the AI in this cursed cursed scenario along with Italy. Meanwhile France has expanded even more in Iberia, Portugal has shrunk, Asturias is in this province for some reason, we got Catalonia in Spain too, Italy have expanded in southern Germany a bit, the two Sicilies still exist though, Hungary has shrunk by quite a lot and the Commonwealth have expanded quite a lot over in the Balkans, they've even taken Constantinople and lots of other provinces in Anatolia. Over here Bavaria and Westphalia are doing alright in the former HRE nations, Sunni Gildum still alive, we got Livonia and Scandinavia, basically Livonia, it is huge, but now they're being gobbled up by the Commonwealth most likely, even though they have so many allies. Russia is small, Shirvan is big, Bahmanis is huge, look at them, Bengal is a junior partner of Ming, that's right everyone, Anglican Bengal is a junior partner of Hussite Ming. That's not all though, Hussite Japan is a junior partner of France everybody, that's the kind of cursed things we're seeing in this scenario man, France PUing Japan, Ming PUing Bengal, I don't even know what to say anymore, but Bengal is looking pretty big themselves, Lana is alright too and we have Portuguese Australia, the Ottomans, they're suffering man, they're suffering, looks like the rise has been halted by the Commonwealth. Let's take a look at the revolutionary map mode and the revolution seems to have spawned in Westphalia, that's right in this province right here, we do have a few revolutions revolutionary nations, revolutionary Aachen right here, Liege, a revolutionary Netherlands, someone else up here, oh it's still the Netherlands, revolutionary Brandenburg and Saxony as well, but a lot of these other guys could be going revolutionary too, Westphalia, Augsburg, France, Italy, Bavaria, I guess we'll have to see, and we will see when we check back in, in 1780. So now is the 1780s and things are getting crazier by the moment man, even more nations forming, let's go over all of that, first off starting off with Paraguay, their expansion so much in South America dude, look at Colombia man, they've shrunk so much, these guys here, all of these guys, they're probably about to disappear, shout out to the huge Paraguay, going over in Central America, some native nations are dominating, in North America, Creek has collapsed, to the French colonies, what is this, Nouvelle, Flander, very nice, we have Canada over here, expanding, Portuguese Alaska is huge, California, Portuguese Louisiana, French Canada, Portuguese Greenland, shout out to all of them, not a lot of changes in Africa, Kilwa is growing, Jenny and Margentina are the same, the Ottomans are shrinking even more at the hands of the Commonwealth. Andalusia I think has shrunk a little bit while revolutionary France has expanded into Iberia, we got Lyon as well, Spain is still alive in this one province right here, Portugal, where's their capital? Let's go click on it, ah uh, of course, it's in the Cape, wonderful wonderful, shout out to Portugal. Italy is shrinking as well, the two Sicilies are growing, so Italy, they're about to get knocked out of Italy. The HRE nations are pretty much gone, being squeezed between the Commonwealth and revolutionary France with only some minor ones remaining, Livonia is still alive though so shout out to them, and like I said the Commonwealth is pushing heavily into the Ottomans. Over in Asia are the most interesting developments though with Bahmanis forming Deccan, a very very powerful nation, and it's actually the second time we've seen Deccan in one of these what if videos, so huge shout out to them, they have formed them even though they've been losing provinces to Ming and their junior partner Bengal which are actually being integrated by Ming right now, and Ming has so many tributaries dude, they're annexing Tibet, they're annexing Bengal, will it be done by the end of the game? I guess we've yet to see, but there we go man, AI Deccan, AI Italy, AI Andalusia, and now even AI Nusantara or Malaya or the Majapahit Empire, it can have one of those three names, since it is called Nusantara and since it is Sunni, and only these provinces over here are Sunni, I'm suspecting that this nation was formed by Brunei, so Brunei formed Nusantara, a fourth formable nation that we rarely see being done by the AI. Over here Japan, they're still a junior partner of France, their independence is supported by Nusantara though, so I guess we'll see if they end up being integrated and that's what's been going on for the past 50 years. We'll check back in for a final time in 1821. So now it's January 3rd, 1821, the end of this scenario where we took a look at what would happen if EU4 was cursed by running the mod that randomly changes every nation's religion at the start and running the mod that gives a 3x multiplier of 
all powers and modifiers in the game. Starting off with South America, we had Portugal and Castile colonizing this, but later colonial nations broke free and we ended up with a huge Paraguay. Only Colombia and some other minor nations like Revolutionary Quito apparently are left in South America. In Central America, we have the Antilles, which are French. We have New Providence, shout out to the pirates. Big Maya, they're Shinto, French Mexico, California, Creek, Canada, big successful nations that we have some more colonies like French Louisiana, New Flanders, French Canada, Portuguese Alaska, and British Alaska and Portuguese Alaska again. Going over to Africa, Kilwa is dominating the east and southern portion of Africa. We got Kasanje in the Congo region. Majertine was pretty successful. The Mamluks are finally back after about 200 years. They're also altering a shout out to the Mamluks. In West Africa, we have Jene dominating and in the Maghreb, we have the Italians, a tiny little Jared, some Ottoman remnants, and an Andalusia formed by Morocco, one of our four rare nations that have been formed by the AI in this scenario. And Spain is their tributary. In the Middle East, this is where the Ottomans have been relegated to after most of their territory was conquered by their neighbors in Persia. It's dominated by Deccan and half of Shirvan. Of course, most of India is also owned by Deccan, a nation which was formed by Bahmanis and the second of our formable nations which are very rarely formed by the AI. Over here we have Bengal. They are still a junior partner of Ming. Anglican, by the way, and in Southeast Asia, we have our third rare formable nation, Nusantara, which was formed by Brunei. They're losing three wars right now. Shout out to them. Over here, we have Australia. It's independent. Not a lot of weird stuff going on over here. Ming is huge. They're Hussite. They got Bengal as a junior partner, and they even colonized all of this. Super, super big. Manchu has popped out again of Japan. Their animist Japan is Hussite as well. Allied to Australia, Revolutionary France, and Ryukyu, and that's what Asia looks like. Not a lot of stuff going on in the hordes. Ah, Russia has been relegated to a horde themselves, it seems like. Or at a still alive. Shirvan was trying to do Mary Nostrum over the Caspian Sea. They didn't succeed. And Orat and Jungar apparently are still alive. Going over to Europe, a lot of cursed things were happening here the entire game, man. Look at this huge Livonia over here. They're still alive, thankfully. We got a massive, massive commonwealth. Like I said at the start, man, a Tengri Poland, all that cavalry stuff, that was a recipe for a win right there and they're massive conquering russia eastern europe even half of germany the carpathian base and half of the balkans almost all of anatolia and they even have constantinople over in italy naples and mantua were vying for dominance of italy naples formed the two sicilies and it looked like they were gonna form italy but actually mantua ended up forming italy our fourth rare nation that has been formed by the ai they even have napoleon here he's from bar though so shout out to bar uh i think it was right here no it's right here no no, actually, it's right here. But Italy are almost gone, man, being relegated to two provinces in Sicily, provinces in the Maghreb, and in Mantua as well, with some provinces over here and in southern Germany. In the HRE, lots of nations were vying for dominance, but in the end, it seems that only Bavaria and Westphalia have ended up being the successful ones. And here we have another super successful nation, France. They went revolutionary. They actually got a not too cursed religion. They got Protestant randomly at the start, so that was great for them. And and in Great Britain, because they're Mahayana, they ended up tributing a bunch of nations and not expanding a whole lot, actually. So being Mahayana definitely hurt Great Britain. And that is what the world is looking like in 1821. In the Great Powers list, we have the Commonwealth at number one, followed by Revolutionary France, Ming, Deccan, Paraguay, Kilwa, Canada, and Nusantara. The Commonwealth is an economic hegemon and Deccan is a military hegemon. Ming was also previously a military hegemon. So what would happen? if EU4 was cursed. Well, apparently the AI would go on to form a ton of nations that we very rarely see in regular games of EU4, like Nusantara, Deccan, Italy, and Andalusia. And weird nations would be successful, like Shirvan, Livonia, and apparently Paraguay. And everyone also had 3x modifiers, everyone had cursed religions. This is what the religion map mode looks like at the end of the game, ladies and gentlemen. This is what the culture map mode looks like. Not a lot of cursed stuff going on over here, except Rans has been doing some converting, and uh, someone else has been doing some converting over here too, but nothing too out of the ordinary. Let me know in the comments below what's the next what 
what if scenario that I should do. If you want to watch me do stuff like this live, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash the Red Hawk live. And if you want to catch up on stuff from over there, you can subscribe to the second channel. Link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like. It really helps out a lot. And if you want to see more what if videos or more U4 videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. And you can become a member today and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.